house of God tonight. Hope that you are. Listen, listen, let me first, before I get in the word, we were recently, our worship team was recently Transformation Music. We were recently uh, published by a, a big Christian music publication on the internet uh, from a cover we did, and it was so amazing, so awesome. There are singles that we got coming out soon. The next, OTC was featured on this one. She did an awesome dog job. And we got Boomy's not escaping because she's next. And then after which, hopefully sometime by the new year, you'll see a single by Transformation Music out, amen? So it's a great thing, the great stuff going on here. Now I want to uh, uh, continue the message series entitled Get Over Yourself. Get over yourself. Say self, get over yourself. <laughs> get over yourself. I know this is not a popular message because people like in the last days, people will become lovers of themselves. And I'm telling you to get over yourself. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of opposite of what the culture is saying. But it's very important that you understand that, all right? The purpose of this message series is so that you can get over yourself, so you can decrease in order that God can increase his work through you. Because if you don't get over yourself, if you don't get over yourself, and get over your selfish ambitions and your pride and all of that, you cannot be a conduit that God wants to use to be of such great impact of the people that are around you. Amen? How I want you to know that you are not on this. You didn't, yo, the purpose of your existence is so that your existence will impact somebody else. Do you not understand, ladies and gentlemen, that you are not on the, you, God didn't put you on here for the sake of yourself, but he put you on the earth for the sake of somebody else? Do you not understand that your existence will help to shape the lives of those that are around you? And so last week we talked about it's bigger than you, but this week I want to talk about the enemy of I. The enemy of I. All right, let's go here. Um, Isaiah chapter 14. Verse 12, it says, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How are you cut down to the ground? You who weaken the nations, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation, the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. All right? Can I explain to you what's going on here? Tonight, I want to talk to you about a, 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 a fallen angel. His name was Lucifer. Right? We now know him now to be Satan interesting thing that you have to understand about in this text ladies and gentlemen it god uses the fall of a babylon king to tell you about the origin of satan here in this text ladies and gentlemen god is not really talking about the babylon king himself he's really talking about satan and his origin where he came from and what happened to him Ladies and gentlemen, Satan is not even his name. Satan is a title because he lost his identity once he got kicked out. Matter of fact, his name originally was Lucifer, meaning the son of the morning. Morning the bright, meaning that he was the son of dawn, that he was, that, that means shining one. That's what his original name was. Matter of fact, the thing that God will tell us about him is the fact that he was, ladies and gentlemen, he was one of God's best creations yeah. in all of heaven. He was made so perfect. How do we know this? Go with me to Ezekiel chapter 30, um, chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Let me explain to you some things here. Found in verse 12, let me show you the first thing. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre and say to him, thus says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now here in this text, God is not really talking about the king of Tyre. He's talking about the, the enemy behind him, which is Satan. 
And he talks about how he once was a seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. In other words, Lucifer was perfect. He was God's most created perfect, well, God's most created uh, perfected being in the heavenlies. In other words, he was full of wisdom and he was full of beauty. He was the shining one. He had superiority. He was high in rank with God. He was so high in rank with God that God trusted him to cover him because he was a cherubim. And cherubims is what covers the throne. When God asked Moses to create the Ark of the Covenant and the cherubim that is covering the seat, that's the mercy seat. He had a chief role. And so he was perfect. He was full of perfection. And his image full of wisdom. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that you have to understand his origin to understand what type of enemy you're dealing with. See, a lot of times in church, we have blamed you and told you that the enemy's dumb, he's stupid, he's ignorant. Matter of fact, he's very smart and he's very clever. He's very decept he's very deceiving. The matter of fact, the Bible says that he was he he was a liar from the very beginning. He was so clever that he was able to talk two thirds of angels out of heaven. So the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, that you're not dealing with somebody who's not intelligent. You're not dealing with somebody who is dumb or ignorant. The enemy knows where his final stop is. But what he's ignorant in the fact is that he's never going to get what he wants. And that's the praise of man. That's to be as equal to God. Oh, my God. And so he was full of perfection. He was full of beauty. Uh, let's go very, let's go very further. He was, you were, verse 13. Verse 13, let's go here. Is it verse 13? Yes. yes, we got it. So you were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was covering. So every precious stone was his covering. God gave him such jewels and so much precious metals that are so unique at how he and, 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 and what's his covering and what he wore. Matter of fact, what he wore is similar to what the priests wore. That God gave them the garments and certain uh, uh, metals in the, uh, uh, that were so unique and so, uh, uh, so precious. He wore them and that's what God gave to him. So God gave him all of this stuff. Do you not see this? It was his covering. And God is the one who gave it to him. It goes on to further says, the work, workmanship of your timbrels and, and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. Matter of fact, he was a musician in heaven. Yeah. In other words, he didn't create, the, 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 the music came out of him. Wow. He was the head musician. Yeah. The cherubims and all of them sit around the throne crying holy and he was one of them. But yet the music was in him. That's why you also got to be careful of music because the enemy is a musician. Why do you think that there's certain things that you can hear and it make you feel a certain type of way? That's why when you, when you want to set a certain mood, you put on a certain type of song. Why? Because music is the, is, is, it, has some, it has an effect on the soul. And that's why the enemy can use music to, to, oh my God, to make you feel and move and to get you to feel a certain type of way that will probably, probably tempt you depending on what you're listening to. Are you hearing me tonight? What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Pastor Dom, the executive pastor here at Transformation Christian Fellowship. And we're asking you to connect your faith with ours as a church by participating in our Only Believe Capital Campaign. Your contribution to our campaign will allow us the opportunity to acquire space and relocate to the Silver Spring area. Currently here in the Clarksville, Maryland area, we have service here at 5, but it's extremely limited. We can only have service at 5. But your contribution to our campaign will allow us the opportunity to relocate to Silver Spring and start our service at an earlier time where more people will be able to come and experience our church and be a part of our Sunday worship experience. Giving to the campaign is really simple. Just go to your phone and text 77977 to TCF1. And under the tab fund, all you have to do is select the Only Believe Capital Campaign. Enter your amount and just click Give. It is that simple. 
Thank you for partnering with us and believing God for the impossible along with us as a church. And remember, transformation starts here. We want you to connect your faith with us as we embark on an ambitious capital campaign entitled, Only Believe. Support us by playing a part in the next stage of our church's history. So he was a chief musician in heaven. He was the musician. Music came out of him. Strings came out of him. He was a he, Music was in him. He led it. He had a superior rank with God because he was God's most precious, perfected, created being. I keep saying that because the devil is not God. But yet we treat him like he is. He's a created being like you and I. <laughs> I'm going to get somewhere with this. I got to lay the foundation of this because I'm letting you know he had all of this and he didn't work for it. All right, watch this. Ezekiel 28 verse 14 says, you were the anointed cherubim who covers. I establish you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the, in the midst of fiery stones. In other words, he had freedom. God gave Lucifer freedom to move around. Freedom of choice. This is during the time where I can't get into the philosophical things of this because of the sake of time. But in a, and there was a time in heaven where angels were on a probationary period. Hence the reason why two-thirds of them fell out. And But watch this. He was anointed. He was anointed to cover. He had the chief position to cover God at his throne. And it says, I established you. God established him over that. God put him there. It wasn't his ambition. It wasn't his talent because God gave it to him. God gave him that position. God gave him that rank. God gave him such a high rank in heaven to be an anointed cherub. He was there. He saw the creation. He rejoiced in it. He did all of that. He was there. Ah, but something happened. Something, something happened to them. Something happened. Ezekiel 28 verse 8, 15 says, you were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Hmm. It says, you were perfect in your ways. You, you were doing what you were supposed to be, serving me in. And, and, and you were anointed, but there was something that happened in you along the way. Until the day iniquity was found in you, something happened to you. So I bring you to Ezekiel 28 to then bring you here to Isaiah 14 to show you what happened to him. Until sin was found in Lucifer. Whereas though he said unto himself, he said in his heart, ladies and gentlemen, he, he put it in his heart that I, I, I will ascend into heaven. I will be, I, I, he, 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 he began to say to himself, I want to take it on. I want to be the one that's praised. He let allowed his beauty and he allowed his wisdom and his perfection to make him believe and to deceive himself that he could actually be God. Yeah. Wow. Praise it. Praise it. Wow. Wow. Oh, oh, Brandon, Pastor B, what in the world does this have to do with me getting over myself? It has everything to do with it. Yeah. Why does it have everything to do with it? Because you can start out good and then end bad. Yeah. You can start out good. Serving God, doing what, but when God establishes you, establishes you and brings you to a place uh, 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 brings you to a place of honor and respect, then somehow you will you get drunk off of it, and then what happens is you start getting thinking in yourself that is actually you. Did you not understand that God made it clear? I'm the one who established you. You didn't get this on your own. 
You were not that. You were not perfected because you were so good. I did it because I chose to. But somewhere down the line, he allowed, he allowed, he allowed himself to be deceived to think for one second that he could be equal with God. And he begins in Isaiah, we see that God tells us that he made these I wills, these I, these I statements, because when you are when you are about yourself, you become about your own selfish ambition, your own self will. And guess what? Your own pride. Because now you think that you're something because in heaven, I'm the main guy. I'm the real one who's causing all of this worship to happen. I am the real one who really covers God. And, and why should I be doing all of this for him? Hallelujah. Why is it? Why is it that you're now telling me that you're creating man and you're saying for us to serve them when they should really be serving us? Mm -hmm. The real reality, ladies and gentlemen, of the whole story is the reason why Satan became and sin entered his heart because he did not want to serve. He wanted to be served. And because he thought he was full of perfection, he got in his mind thinking that he could be God and walk as God. But the real reality is he wanted to be equal with him. And what he did not like is that he made man equal with him and not him. He made man equal with him because angels are not created in the image of God. Because angels are not created in the image of God, they have to serve man's purpose. And the enemy saying, no way. Because I'm such a perfected being and because of my beauty and because of all of that, it's no way in the world. Instead of the worship of him, let me be equal to. I don't need to even be greater. Let me be equal to. And something happened when God said, let us make man into our own image. Oh, my God, help me in this room tonight. And so the fact of the matter is, is even when, when you are about yourself, there's something that comes in you, this pride, this such pride that comes in to think that you're actually more than what you think you are. Huh. You're more than what you think you are. So what happens is, is that the enemy starts deceiving. That's how churches get split up. That's how families get split up. Because there's a whisper, whispering in someone's ear, some deception that is trying to get them to deviate from the plan of God. To get them to deviate not only from the plan of God, but being in the, oh my God, not in the plan of God, but the blessings of God. Hallelujah. The enemy can promise you some things, but he can't promise you the things that God can. Why? Because he's not God. We have made the devil to be like he's om omniscient, like he knows everything. We've made the devil to be like he's omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at the same time. He's not God. He's not God. We blame him for this. We blame him for that. We blame him for this. And he cannot be everywhere at the same time. Hmm? That's what he wants. But he can't get because he's no more than a created being. <laughs> and so, ladies and gentlemen, he's full on himself. And what he begins to do is make his business to try to pursue his own selfish ambition. How do we know this? Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's, let's look at the word. It says, how are you fallen from heaven, Lucifer, son of the morning? How you are cut down to the ground. You were weakened, you who weakened the nations, for you have said in your heart. The moment you start is when you start saying in your heart things about yourself that, you know what, I want to be this. I want to, you know, I will ascend. I will do. I will do. And in all of your this, all of your eyes, no God is represented in it. <laughs> you make everything about yourself. He didn't care about them two-thirds of angels. He needed those angels to follow him to make him feel good about himself. 
Oh, Jesus, help me in here. When you are about yourself, you don't care about those people that are around. You want them to just put you on a pedestal so they can praise you, so you can feel good about yourself, so you can feel how great you are, and so they can kiss your butt and say, oh, you're so this and you're so that, but their praise is not good enough. Let me tell you something tonight. You better get over your need for validation. You got to get over your need of self-praise. You better get over your need for that because you can't be used by God. And that's why God had to throw him out of heaven because he had to make a clear sign to you to say, I share my glory with no one. As I've given you the glory, I can strip the greater glory from you because you're not an equal, you're beneath. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, I don't share my glory with anybody. And the real reality of the, of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen, God cannot use anybody who is full on their selves. He cannot use anybody who's so full and wanting to be the center of attention. No, he can use somebody who's a little timid and say, you know what? I don't know how to do all of this, but I can use you and I'll bring you to the front stage and I'll use you. Because you know where to direct the glory to. See, the reality is the enemy wanted the glory for himself. And that's why God strip away his name. Because you can't carry the name that I've given you. And begin to fall and begin to strip in the sin. You cannot have the right of that. You need to be, get over your need for validation, your need for wanting to be self-approved and the, the center of attention. It's not about you. You're not that important. While you are important, you're not that important because God is not the only one using you. Matter of fact, while Satan was the anointed cherubim, music didn't stop in heaven just because Lucifer got kicked out. Oh my God, it don't stop because you decide to make another decision. If God, you don't want to be used by God, and if you don't want him to get the glory, God got somebody else who will do it. You need to get over yourself. You think, oh, if I don't do it, God ain't gonna do nothing. You know what? If you despise what God has given you, God will give it to your seed. Ask me why. Hallelujah, because the same thing happened to the children of Israel because they couldn't get over themselves. God said, you're not gonna enter the promised land. I'll give it to your children and they will appreciate it. Look at somebody say, get over yourself. Get over yourself. Let me tell you something. The only thing that's stopping you is you. The only thing that's stopping you is because of yourself. But if you get over yourself and say, you know what, God, I'm nothing. I'm nothing without you. Can't do nothing without you. And I thank you for what you've given me, but I'm giving it back to you. The moment you do that, God can take you far. See, you've been reading these self-help books. You've been listening to these gurus on Instagram. Let me tell you the simple thing that's going to take you far. The Bible says, humble yourself out of the mighty hand of God. And God will exalt you. Shout hallelujah. That's the plan of success. The plan of success is to submit yourself unto God. And the fact of the matter is the devil come on, come on. wanted all of the attention for himself. What the description said, he said, I will, I will ascend into heaven and exalt my throne above the stars of God. Not only did he want it to be, here's the thing. Those two thirds of angels were dumb because he wasn't worried about them. He wanted to be exalted over them. How do I know this? He said it right here. I will exalt, I will ascend into heaven, will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Meaning the other angels. Not only did he want to be equal of God, he wanted to be over, even more over all the rest of them. <laughs> them following him was only part of his plan. He wanted to exalt himself over you. He didn't care for you. <laughs> what else did he say? He said, I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. So he said, I'm also going to sit. I'm going to sit and allow them to worship me too. He didn't want to be above God. He just wanted to be equal to God. Yeah. 
And so he said, okay, God is set up on this side. I'm going to help my, I'm going to put my seat over here. I'm going to also sit on the mountain. See, he didn't like that neither. Because the enemy looked at it. He said, he looked at it and say, why is the Trinity being blessed? Why can I not get some of that? Did you understand that Jesus sat on the right hand of the Father before he, <laughs> uh, before he even came down here? He said, I will, you, you, you see this? He said, I will, I will, I will, I will. Here's another thing he said. What else he said? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Then he said that he wanted to be over God? No. He said, I wanted to be like God. People saying that he wanted to really put himself over God. No. He wanted to be like God. He wanted to worship God of God that was like God to be honored like God why am I telling you all of this because here's why if you don't get over yourself God will cut you down he will humble you very fast here's the thing about it the fortunate thing for you and I is that we have grace Now, I have a question. Would God have given the enemy a second chance if he repented? Something to think about. He had no penitence in his heart. That's what grew in his heart. He grew in himself an envy and a jealousy, and that's why you can't really be accepted of others. Because you're envious. And no, and you know what's so funny? When you get to higher heights, you just grieve. It's the, uh, it's the greed that gets on the inside of you to feel like, oh, I want more praise. I want more of this. You got to be careful. I'm telling you, it's not that money's bad. Money is great. Money solves a lot of issues. Amen? All right, you need money. I'm not telling you don't. But the Bible says for the love of money is the root of all evil. When you start bringing things to be more idols like your success, being more idols than God, guess what? You're coming down. It is, you're coming down. What did God say? You going, your final end is the lowest pit. You ain't been to hell yet. People think the enemy's in hell. No, he's not. He's not in hell yet. He's not in hell yet, actually. Matter of fact, he's here running around the earth. He got rulership around the earth because we gave it to him. But then God came and sent his son and took it back from him. Hallelujah. And the reality of it is this, ladies and gentlemen. If you don't get over your need for self-approval, if you don't get over your need for wanting to be the center of attention, and if you don't get over your need for wanting to be in control and laying down your will for God, God, again, it's all about the glory of God. It's not about you. It's not about you and I. All right, let me give you uh, uh, some more Bible to back this up, and I'm coming to a close. Are you getting something out of this? Let's see here. Let's see. E. Let's go here. Proverbs 11, verse 2 in the New Living Translation says, Pride leads to disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. Pride will lead you to disgrace. Pride will lead you to be disgraced. He was once the light. You know why the enemy can disguise himself as light, but he's really darkness? Because light was in him at one time. <laughs> That's why you got to be very careful who comes and what they appear to be. Because they can appear to be light. But in the inside, they're really dark. That's why I always say give it time. Because the true colors of a person will always show. It don't matter what they appear to be. See, what oftentimes people appear to be, that's not who they really are. Get around them. Look at how consistent they be. Oh, he ain't showing no signs. She ain't showing no signs. Give it a little bit of time. And if she doesn't or he or she don't, then God bless you. But eventually it's going to show up. Pride, he, he was disgraced. He, God wrote him and kicked him out. Jesus said in Matthew, he said, I, in Luke, he said, I saw him get kicked out like lightning. Literally got kicked out. 
Pray, because pride leads to disgrace. The Bible says pride comes before the fall. And what hindered him to fall is his pride. You know what? All you know what? People start out good, and then when their business gets to a certain extent, and when they get to a certain way, they start they start doing corruption because their pride. And many people take a big fall because of it. Let me give you Galatians six verse three, New Living Translation. It says, "If you think you are too important to help someone." You are only fooling yourself. You are not that important. That's Galatians 6, 3. That's what Paul said. I didn't say it. If you think you are important to help, that you are too important to help someone. Here's the reality. The devil thought he was too important to be a servant. That's why Jesus said, if you want to be the great, then you need to be a servant. Really, if you really want to go somewhere, you, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. You got to think of yourself, not, not think of yourself, but you have to put yourself in a lowly position when it comes to God. You want to know the higher you go with God, the higher you go with God depends on the level of submission you are willing to give to him. The higher you go with God is contingent on how willing you are able to surrender to God. Every level you increase on, that means you need to have a stronger level of humility. Because as, let me tell you something, TCF, it seems like it's taking forever for God to do what he's gonna do here, right? But guess what, as, as long as it took to get to where God has taken us, it will go in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Are you hearing me tonight? Your fall will be quicker than your climb. <laughs> it's the truth. And then you know what makes it, you know what's so funny? God will actually sometimes, he won't even bring you down that quick. Sometimes he'll let the process just go, let you see it come down one by one to harden your heart. Hopefully it leads to repentance. Do you see that? Let me end on this. I hope you're getting something out of this. I'm telling you. You need to hear me and hear me good. James 3, James chapter 3, verse 14 through 16, it says, But if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, but if you are bitterly jealous and there is selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth and boasting and lying. Don't cover up the truth because you're really jealous. You're really bitter. With your selfish ambition. Let me tell you something. Selfish ambition will get you, will get, will lead to destruction. It will eventually lead to destruction. If you are always about self, it will it eventually lead you to destruction. I'm not saying you won't have some success. I'm just telling you it's coming to destruction at some point. Verse 15 says, for jealousy and selfishness are not God's kind of wisdom. In other words, God's kind of wisdom is not one that is selfish or jealous. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Because why is it demonic? Because of the first sin ever recorded was in heaven, and that was because of Lucifer. That's why it's demonic. That's why you don't need to be jealous of anybody. Because in God's kingdom, everybody... Everybody is going to see some success. Yeah. Now, no matter what level of success you see, you got to be content in it. Because God is going to do something for you just like you're going to do something for your brother and sister. Amen. Don't be so caught up like, oh, God, what about me? What about me? Don't worry about it. He's going to get you. You just stay faithful, man. You just stay faithful and committed and let God do what he's going to do. But don't get in yourself because when you get in yourself and you try to, how many of us, because we felt like God was taking too long, started getting in our own self and then we didn't, because we couldn't get over ourselves and then we try to cause something to happen or make something happen and then you realize, wow, I really set myself back. Yeah. See, if you don't get over yourself, you'll set yourself back. 
and you were trying to go far, but you set yourself back because you didn't brought people into the equation and you've brought other things into the equation. And then what happened is, is that you begin to set yourself behind. And then you also got to think about how God has to then reroute you and put you back on the plan. And so don't delay yourself because you can't get over yourself. Because if you've driven by self-ambition, then you'll always be competing against somebody. You'll always be competing. And this is not about competition. What does it mean? What does it look like for me to compete against my brother and sister in Christ? What does it mean for me to compete? About, uh, and I, I'm not even going to go with people in Christ, but we compete against those who are in the world. We know where they're, we, we know where they're going. What does that mean? They're heading for destruction. Yes, it looks like that. Yes. Asaph felt the same way in Psalm 70. He felt like, oh my God, it seems like the wicked are prospering. What about us? It only seems that way. Because guess what? They're coming to a demise. I said, it said, it's not until I got into the sanctuary where all the things made clear. So what does it mean to compete against them or wanting to be like them? Putting yourself up against those who put up highlight reels on Instagram and Facebook, man. It's all a highlight reel. Half of that stuff ain't even real. My God. And if, it is, if, and if it is real, you know what? God bless them. But you know what? At the end of the day, you have to trust that your God has a plan for you. Verse 16 says, for wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and evil of every kind. Here's the thing. When you see that, ladies and gentlemen, you know what's going to happen? You will begin to cut. Oh, my God. You'll begin to try to cut corners, do various things, deceive people to try to come up. See, a lot of people have this idea that you got to be cut through, that you got to tear other people down. Because when you're about yourself, and that's what the enemy was doing, he had a plan all along. And guess what? He was tearing other people down. He was tearing other people down so he could come up because he thought that God was going to allow him to be an equal. But God, again, don't share his glory with no man. And so the reality is this, is when you think and you have that type of ambition, you'll begin to have to cheat, you'll lie, you'll steal, you'll do anything you can do just to get in that position of power. You'll lie, you'll do anything because that's the seat you want. You want that seat of power. And then you know what's so funny is when you do all of that and you finally get there, you don't feel any fulfillment. Ask me why. Because it was never about God. And that's what Solomon realized in Ecclesiastes. You do anything without God, you will not have any fulfillment. What is the enemy of I? The enemy of I is this. That I can be my own enemy when I allow my self-ambition, my pride, and my self-will to stand in the way of God's will. That's it. There is not a big plan to be successful. The plan, of the plan is simply as this. Humility. Honor is what puts you in the places of kings sits you at the table of kings and queens. God is the one that brings promotion. That's it. God is responsible for promotion. God is responsible for that. And the moment you think that you are, you'll lose. Stand your feet. You may have to ask God to forgive you of those things. All of us have been there. But guess what? Don't allow you to, don't let you be your own enemy. Because the enemy wants to deceive you to make you think that you can do it without God. I want you to know this. The devil challenged Jesus, and the devil knew who Jesus was. You are not exempt. The devil tested Jesus to want to know what his motives were. 
to see if he could get him to fall like he got Adam and Eve. It worked on them. Let me try God. Funny thing is he tried it with God. Jesus is God. And guess what? The devil told him, I'll give you all of this. I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. Just throw yourself off this cliff. Do this. The enemy will come and tempt you and say, why don't you do this? I can give you this. I can give you that. He will tempt you with everything of this world. But guess what? This world is fading. <laughs> it's fading away. It's perishing every day. People talk about climate change. Listen, as long as the earth exists, there will always be seed time and harvest. Ain't nothing going on. But the reality is the earth is fading away. One thing is not going to be fading away is that God has, a, God, God has rewards for us that are eternal. That while your accolades here, they all will go. Means nothing. Great, but it means nothing. Can't take my money where I'm going. Can't take my prestige with me where I'm going. I don't take my title of pastor, Brandon, where I'm going. I don't take any of that stuff. You know what I take with me? I take, let the works I've done, the works that, though they cease from their labor, their work shall follow them. What I'm doing is storing up my treasures here to be prepared for them. And the way I do that is getting over myself. Encourage somebody in the Lord and say, it ain't about you. <laughs> it ain't about you. It's not about you. If you're not saved in this room, I offer you Jesus the Christ. I offer you Jesus. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He will give you purpose that you're looking for. He will give you clarity. He'll give you a purpose. And more importantly, he'll give you eternal life.